let's lay the foundations for the types of calculations that you will be um, coming across so, so, so often throughout your A-level chemistry. These are going to be the simplest type just so that you can get the approach because this approach, when we're talking about reacting masses, you can apply to other species as well, gases, volumes, etc. And that's because if we as chemists, and I'm including you as well, if we need to know how much of a reactant we need to produce a certain amount of product, or we want to know how much product can I expect if I start with this amount of reactant, then we need to come down to essentially the number of particles. And if we want to know how many particles there are, we're going to measure that using our standard quantity for amount of substance, which is of course, when in doubt, moles or the mole. So if you are given x grams of a reactant or product and you want to figure out the other the first thing that we're going to need to do is to calculate the moles and we calculate the moles of course as the mass divided by the mr which is the relative formula mass or the relative molecular mass might be the relative atomic mass i have a video already on mr so if you want a reminder of how to calculate that then head back over there now, once we've got the moles for our first species, wherever we've got enough information to calculate the moles for, we then need to use the balance symbol equation to determine the ratio. So the ratio between the two species in question. That will allow us to figure out the moles or the number of moles of the next thing that we're trying to figure out. And then once we've got the moles, then we can now find whatever it is that we're trying to find. That could be the, um, the mass, which is what we're dealing with in this video, but could also be a number of other things like volume, concentration, etc. For this video, we're focusing just on mass. And if we want to calculate the mass from the number of moles, that's going to be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the MR. So this is the approach that we are following. And again, it is a standard approach, a standard um, kind of method, step by step, that you can follow if you want to figure out X, if you're given Y. So let's do a couple of examples. We'll start with a simple example that will probably be super familiar from um, like GCSE even, and then we'll do a trickier one. So example one here, we're given the equation for the reaction between calcium and oxygen. We need to determine the minimum mass of oxygen required to completely react with 650 grams of calcium. Now, once again, I shall rewrite it just so that we've got our steps here. We're going to go moles of whatever we can find the moles for. Use the balance symbol equation to determine the ratio that these two are um, kind of in relationship, I don't know, the ratio. Then we're going to use that to find the moles of the other species. And then once we've got the moles, we can calculate the mass. Now at GCSE, and this might not be all of you, but I know from when I have taught it and from students that I have spoken to, at GCSE, you might be used to um, setting this out in like a tabular, so like a table kind of um, setup. Now, if you want to keep using a table, I can't, I can't stop you, right? I, I don't know where you live, but when it comes to A-level, I would move away from that table approach. And the reason for that is, while it may work with really simple calculations like this, as you progress through your studies, there are going to be more steps that are going to take you out of that table and then will make it look a little bit messy and be harder to track. So my preferred approach, where's my pen? Right here. So my preferred approach is to set it out just kind of down your page, just linear. And then once you run out of space, then you just go to the other half of your page and start working down that side as well. So we're going to start by calculating the number of moles, what we can calculate the moles for. And because we've been given the mass of calcium, that's what we've got enough information to calculate the moles of for. So we'll start by calculating the moles of calcium and I'm using lowercase n to represent mol represent wow to represent the number of moles with that kind of subscript ca that's just for my tracking and so that whoever is checking my working can see exactly what I'm doing at each stage i do not like 
because they're confusing and they're scary and they're really difficult to check if you've made a mistake and to check your work if you've got floating numbers that don't have a label. So make sure that any number that you write down, you can trace it back to what that number actually represents. So the number of moles of calcium, that's going to be your mass divided by your MR, which in this case, the mass from the question is 650 grams. The MR, or really the AR for calcium, you can find in your period, periodic table, that's how you say it, um, which is 40.1, remember one decimal place for your relative atomic masses in your periodic table. And that gives us how many moles? 16. 0.2 moles of calcium. Doesn't necessarily need units, but the units for moles are just mole. Now we've got the number of moles of calcium. We in this question have been asked to determine the minimum mass of oxygen. So now we're going to need to use the ratio in our balance symbol equation to relate the moles of calcium to the moles of oxygen. Now looking at the, I'm gonna go back to green just so you can see it super, super clearly. The ratio between the calcium and the oxygen is two to one, right? Two in front of the calcium and then an invisible one in front of the oxygen. So if this is a two to one ratio, to get from the number of moles of calcium to the number of moles of oxygen, we're going to divide by two and then multiply by one, which is the same as just saying divide by two. So two to one moles of oxygen, again, labeling everything, that's going to be our number of moles of calcium divided by two, which is 8.1. Now I've run out of space on this side of my page. So I'm just gonna go over to the other side of my page, still making sure that I'm tracking what is going on. If I've got the moles of oxygen, I'm now ready to find the mass the mass of oxygen is going to be calculated as the moles multiplied by the MR. Number of moles calculated already here, 8.1. MR for oxygen O2 is 32.0. Again, have a look at my MR video if you're not quite confident with calculating MR. And we end up with, what do we get? 259. And for now, I'm gonna say what it says in my calculator. It says 259.35. Now, will I necessarily keep this as my final answer? I'm going to say no, right? Now they haven't, I say uh, they, I wrote the question, but it doesn't necessarily say in the question to give your answer to a particular number of significant figures. However, it is good practice to give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, whether they have asked or not, because it's just the right, it's just the right thing to do, okay? Now, in the question, and how we choose a number of significant figures is, we look at the least number of significant figures given in the values in our question. Now, the only value that we're given in our question is 650, and that is two, to be fair, it's hard to tell, but we can say that's to three significant figures. It could be to two, but let's say it's to three significant figures, which means that as the final answer, I'm going to give that to three significant figures as well, okay? Nice and simple, some of you may have got that answer way before me, maybe you've even fast forwarded because you wanna see the tricky one that I'm about to do next and I, that's fine, I forgive you. So I'm going to clear the board and we're going to do a slightly, um, slightly more involved where instead of calculating the mass, we might want to determine the identity of a species by calculating the MR. For our second example, we have a water of crystallization question. Um, now there are multiple ways that you could solve this problem. And if you've got another way that is different from the one I'm about to show you that you really like, feel free to put it in the comments. But if you're ever unsure, a nice place to go back to is calculate the number of moles, look at ratios and see how far that can get you if you are stuck. Right? I always say when in doubt, moles. So we are given 59.6 grams of our hydrated copper two chloride. Let me even write it over here. And then on heating, that gives us 3.26 grams of our anhydrous salt. 
And the question is, what is the MR of the hydrated salt? Now, again, it might not be immediately obvious what we can do, but if we come back to moles, we can think, okay, what do I have enough information to calculate the moles for? Well, we've got two masses, but we can't find the moles of our hydrated salt because we don't know the MR. We don't know what X is, so we can't find the MR and find the moles directly. Instead, what we can do, or what we do have enough information for, is to find the number of moles of our anhydrous salt, because we do know the mass, which is 3.26, and we know the MR, or at least we can figure out the MR from our periodic table, which I calculated earlier, which is 129.9, right? One cobalt plus two chlorines. When we plug that in, we end up with... 0.0251 moles. Now we've got the moles, we can use our balance symbol equation to um, determine the ratio. Now there's no coefficient in front of either of those, which means this must be a one-to-one -one ratio. So the number of moles of our hydrated salt, I'm just going to write hide because I don't want to write it all out again. Um, the number of moles of our hydrated salt is the same as the number of moles as the of the anhydrous salt. One, oops, one to one. Now we've got the moles of the second thing. This time we don't want the mass, we've already been given the mass. Instead we want the MR. And how do we calculate the MR? Well, just by rearranging, if, and let's just do it as a bit of a side quest over here, if mass is equal to moles times MR, then MR must be equal to mass over moles. So we'll take the mass that we've been given from the question, 5.96, we'll divide that by the number of moles that we've got here, and we end up with and I'm pressing ants each time, we end up with 237.5. How many significant figures? To be fair, three significant figures here is usually the most appropriate, but we know in our periodic table, MRs are given to one decimal place. So I'm actually going to just leave it like that for this particular question. Now, this type of question might have a follow on, um, which would be to determine the value of X. And I mean, seeing as, seeing as we're here, we might as well do that, right? Are you gonna stay with me? Please do, thank you so much. So now, if we actually wanted to figure out, now we've got the MR, what is X? All we need to do is subtract the known part from the whole thing so that we can find out the unknown part. What do I mean by that? I hope I'm not falling off the screen here. So we already know the MR for this, right? Which is 129.9. And we know the MR for the whole thing, which is what we just calculated, which is 237.5. So then how will we calculate the number of waters? We just subtract them, right? So, oh, I'll get that later. So our X H2O, we can calculate as the MR of the whole thing, 237.5 minus the MR of the known part, 129.9. I'm writing underneath just in case I'm out of space. I didn't mean to rhyme, but you know, can't help it sometimes. And we end up with 107.6. So that's the total MR of all the water molecules that are there. So if we want to then figure out how many water molecules that corresponds to, well, then our X is going to be equal to the total MR of all of our waters divided by the MR of just one water molecule. And when we do that, we end up with 5.97, which is basically six, okay? You will see, let me just shuffle out the way a little bit. You will see questions like this relatively often, particularly in some of these kind of scary long titrations where they want you to calculate the MR and use the MR to determine the value of X, so the number of waters of crystallization. Um, so. 
an important one to um, say. Make sure that you have liked this video, that you comment if you've got any questions, and that you have subscribed to um, Lejoy Does Chemistry so that um, you see the future chemistry A-level videos that come out. And I will see you over there in one of those. Okay, bye.